This clinical education companion is for users of the Gentle Max Pro. It is not a substitute for complete training. Be sure to read all the materials and take full advantage of the in-service training session. Gentle Max Pro, the best of both worlds, with Alexandrite 755 nanometer and ND YAG 1064 nanometer wavelengths for laser hair removal the treatment of vascular lesions, the treatment of pigmented lesions, diffuse redness, and improvement in skin texture. For any laser treatment, it is important to have a complete initial consultation with the patient to review the patient's medical history, including medications. Select the proper skin type of the patient, complete a physical examination, review contraindications, and discuss the treatment process. Establishing appropriate and realistic expectations prior to the treatment is important. The informed consent should be reviewed and signed. Pre-treatment preparations, such as advice regarding sun exposure and post-treatment care, should also be considered and discussed. Please refer to the clinical manual and in-service instructions for a complete discussion of these items. Chapter 1. Laser Hair Removal The 755 nanometer and 1064 nanometer wavelengths are excellent choices for laser hair removal. The 755 nanometer wavelength has a strong affinity for the melanin in the hair shaft, which transmits heat to the bulb and the bulge of the follicle. The 1064 nanometer wavelength has a mild affinity for melanin, making it a safer choice for darker skin types, and a strong affinity for the nutrient vessel supply. Light energy is converted to heat energy. This energy, when applied for the correct amount of time, damages the source of growth of the hair follicle while keeping the surrounding tissue healthy. All follicles cannot be damaged in one single session as hair grows in different phases, the anagen phase, the catagen phase, and the telogen phase. Each phase has a unique anatomy. In order for the follicle to be optimally damaged, the bulb, bulge, and vascular supply should be present. It is in the anagen phase of the hair growth cycle that the follicle can be optimally targeted. The growth cycle varies depending on which part of the body the hair follicle is found. This is why hair removal requires successive treatments at various treatment intervals. Explaining this to your patients, along with instructions regarding what to expect, how to care for the skin, protect the skin, and remove hair between sessions, will greatly increase patient compliance, treatment success, and customer satisfaction. The next step towards beginning the treatment should be the test spot. Some practitioners prefer to carry these out days prior to beginning the full treatment session. This is especially recommended in patients with darker skin types or under special circumstances such as the use of potentially photosensitizing medication. In these cases, it is best to wait 48 to 72 hours before assessing the skin's response. Before any laser treatment, always make sure the skin is completely clean and there is no sign of any makeup, cream, or deodorant. Residues can lead to burns. The test spot can be used to check the reaction of the skin and also to determine the optimal parameters for treatment. One way to achieve this is to mark off an area and divide it into three parts. Select a different fluence for each area starting with the lowest parameters for the selected skin type. Refer to the treatment guidelines and select parameters based upon the treatment and skin type. In the Pro Series, the treatment guidelines are also available in an easy-to-use guided interface. Prior to pulsing the laser, make certain everyone in the room has the appropriate laser eye protection. 
Be certain that the eye protection has been cleaned between patients. Also be sure that the room is free of reflective surfaces. All windows are appropriately covered and the door is closed with the appropriate signage. Once the safety of the surroundings has been checked and the parameters have been selected, we will pulse the laser one or two times in each of the selected energies and then wait for the skin's response. We look for parafollicular edema in the case of the 755 nanometer laser, which may be accompanied by a mild redness. In the case of the 1064 nanometer laser, the response is less pronounced. This is an example of a very strong parafollicular response. A milder variation is also acceptable. Now we can proceed to complete the treatment. For larger zones, you may wish to mark the zones in order to more easily remember which area has been treated. Remember to lower the energy by two joules over bony areas. Also remember that areas that have more pigmentation, such as the genital or axillary region, will also require a change in parameters based on the level of pigmentation. Be sure when pulsing near orifices, such as the nose or ear, that they are covered with multiple layers of moist white gauze. Also be certain to avoid lentigos, covering them with white pencil and or a white paper as needed. Also remember to keep a one centimeter distance around tattoos. The long pulsed laser can be used to treat benign pigmented lesions, but never tattoos. Prior to beginning the sessions, you will want to know what the distribution and caliber of the hair is. Once this is determined, it is best to have the patient shave at home 24 to 48 hours prior to the session. There should be little or no hair on the surface of the skin. This is very important for two reasons. First, this will allow the skin to recover from the shaving and prevent folliculitis. Second, there will be enough hair growth to see where treatment is needed. Once you begin, remember the distance gauge should be placed flush, perpendicular, and overlapping. The Gentle Max Pro is capable of very rapid treatments from just a single pulse all the way up to 2 Hz. Be certain that as you move the distance gauge across the area, that it is flush against the skin and neither pushing nor hovering in the air. The distance gauge should be perpendicular to the skin and not at an angle. Take care of this especially around curved areas of the body. Also be sure that the distance gauge overlaps approximately 20%. Remember, flush perpendicular, and 20% overlapping. Let's review the parameter selection. We know the first thing we must carefully select is the phototype of the patient and adjust parameters for bony or pigmented areas. We have also discussed selection of fluents based upon the skin type of our patient and the test spot response. Now let's discuss how we select spot size, pulse duration, and cooling. Spot size selection for hair removal depends upon the depth of the follicle and therefore the part of the body that is being treated. For deeper follicles found in the body, you will use a 15 or 18 gauge spot size. For more superficial follicles on the face, you will use the 12 gauge spot size. To change the spot size, press the gray side button on the handpiece and move the slider until you have reached the desired size and feel the slider engage with a click. 
Notice that the silver piece called the slider attachment at the end of the slider is for spot sizes 12, 15, and 18 millimeters, and the gold for spot sizes 6, 8, and 10 millimeters. The piece is easily changed by pulling off the end and replacing it with the desired piece. Make sure once you have selected the spot and calibrated the device that you place the appropriate distance gauge for the spot size selected. Make sure your distance gauge is clean and has no black stain on it. If it is developing black stains, you may clean the end with a diluted bleach solution. Change your distance gauge every 200 to 300 pulses. A clean window and fresh gauge can be quickly and easily attached. Also during the treatment, keep the distance gauge free of any frost from the cryogen by quickly wiping every 30 to 40 pulses. And of course, clean with isopropyl alcohol or medical wipes between patients. Selection of the pulse duration. The three millisecond pulse duration is an excellent short pulse duration, especially to remove finer hair. You may wish to leave your pulse duration selection at three milliseconds or in the case of dense hair or thick hair, as in the kind found in a man's beard or the bikini area, you may wish to extend the pulse duration to 10 or even 20 milliseconds, especially during the initial sessions. Extended pulse durations can also provide increased safety for darker skin types. Remember, with darker skin types especially, test spots are highly recommended. Selection of Epidermal Cooling Parameters The Gentle Max Pro has the option of air cooling or cryogen cooling. For cryogen cooling, parameters should be selected based upon the type of treatment, the spot size, and skin type. Each day, check that the cryogen nozzle is centered and using the cryogen verification form that the distribution of the spray is homogeneous. In this case, we have selected 40 milliseconds of spray with a 20 millisecond delay between the spray and the laser pulse to fully cover the 18 millimeter distance gauge area. After the treatment is complete, you may use cool packs if desired, especially in the case of excessive redness. Otherwise, hydrating the skin with aloe vera gel or topical hydrocortisone, and instructing the patient regarding continued hydration and sun protection are important. The following are maintenance tips that are especially important after hair removal treatments. Be sure to clean the distance gauges, inner slider, and window. The distance gauge should be cleaned with alcohol between every patient. Any darker spots can be cleaned with a diluted bleach solution at the end of the day. The window should be changed approximately every 200 to 300 pulses at the same time as you switch out the distance gauge. In order to change the window, simply slide out the window holder and replace the window. All windows and distance gauges can then be cleaned at the same time at the end of the treatment session. It's important to clean the handpiece area that houses the slider by removing the slider and the external window. Clean the inner portion by wiping like this. Be sure to clean the outer part of the slider and check the slider window. This should be done between patients. The slider window should otherwise be removed and cleaned daily. <laughs>